Mr. Speaker, I heard the leader of the opposition, and he was very animated. He spoke, he spoke very passionately. He spoke very passionately. Uh, he, 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 said, he said a number of things, and I, 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 was, I was able to focus on that which he said and got right to the crux of it. And there were a few things that he said that he clearly does not understand the context of which he was saying. He, met, he made reference two weeks ago to the progressive labor parties having a view of the boogeyman. And he said it again tonight, the view that there is a boogeyman. He took umbrage to what the MP from constituency 11 famous was saying. If you do not understand the context or the history of this country, then you will see the protestations, the highlighting of injustice in this country as being the work of the boogeyman. We represent a party that speaks for the voiceless, the working men and women in this country that were dispossessed of their land down in Tucker's town, that had their land taken from them and was rebuilt on. We speak for the people in this party that live in the central Pembroke parishes that do not have, home, that do not have yards. And their homes, were, their yards, were, were, they were not allowed to buy homes with yards because that was a part of a master plan to keep them from having the ability to vote. So when we speak of the people that we represent, this is a historic representation of injustice in this country. We represent the working man, the struggling people of this country. That is the voice in which the member from constituency 11 speaks. He speaks for the working men and women in this country, and we can never forget that. And so something that you call the boogeyman is things that we see as injustice, as white privilege, the inability for us to have specific things, have neighborhood schools, do not have the opportunities that our colleagues have. The very reason we are here is to equal the playing field, but you call it the boogeyman. Sometimes, sometimes, Minister, you, Minister. sometimes you have to highlight to wrongdoing. Sometimes you have to highlight wrongdoing, injustice, unfairness to change it. Yeah. And if we don't bring it and keep it in the forefront, we forget that many people that we represent are not living in gated communities, have the ability to be at Coral Beach playing tennis, that they are struggling every day to make ends meet. Those are the people that we represent. And so when we speak, when we speak of, when you speak of the boogeyman, we are disassembling white privilege. And that is not, and that is, and that is not necessarily a bad thing. We're talking, we're talking about a party that has to be focused on where we are going for our people. You spoke of arrogance and a pendulum swinging and telling us to be careful of what we're doing. And not to be haughty. Look at the work we are doing. It speaks voluminously. If we allow the Royal Gazette to paint the narrative, that will be, and that is what's creating the boogeyman of the PLP leadership. Because you would love this, you would love this country to think that we are irresponsible, taking money and stealing money and not taking care of the finances of this country. But that is not the case. We are seeing prudent leadership, and it is shown. And it is shown by what we are doing with NAMLAC and how we have put a number of bills that are going through the, have gone through this house and our assessments are coming back and we are in good order. Those are the things that we are doing to change this country. When we, when we are working to do things like working on the issues with, uh, with, with the academic substance, when we're, when we're doing things like working with the Bermuda Regiment, not only just to end conscription, but to give the young men and women in the Bermuda Regiment other alternatives. So when you speak of the boogeyman, we're, we are taking this country that for years has dispossessed people of color, have taken away their opportunities. It is our responsibility to bring an equal playing field so everyone gets a balanced opportunity in Bermuda. Now, I know that we are on both sides and on different sides of the aisle, but we must bring it back to why this 
These members are here. We sacrifice. And bonds we lean. We work hard. We sacrifice. We give our all for this country. And, some, and, sometimes in the, and sometimes in the cut and thrust of this house, we oftentimes forget, all of us, why we are here. We have seen this week a number of things highlighted in our community. But let me tell you this. We stand on our post every day with legislation that has been passed in this house where we now see roadside sobriety testing. Yeah. And it is not popular in all segments of this community. But guess what we're going to see? We're going to see less people dying on our roads. We're going to see people paying close attention to their speeds and to changing uh, uh, their responsibility on the road. That's what we're going to do. In the absence of all the noise, in the absence of everybody pointing fingers and, and getting up. And of course, we're going to be vociferous on some point. Yeah. But let's look at what we're doing in the fintech space. 44 companies that have set up in Bermuda. This, in this coming week, we will make announcements of more companies coming and setting up and creating jobs in Bermuda. So after all the hype is gone, everything that we're doing is to continue to make this country a better place. When we look at the sugar tax, a number of people have decried the sugar tax. But what is the basis of it? We have some of the highest instances of diabetes in this country. The epi in the world. The epicenter of this legislation was to change behavior and to spend less money and to make sure people live longer and healthier and fruitful lives. Yes. Guess what? That's not coming from anywhere else. That's coming from this part. So when you tell the story, we have to make sure, when we tell the story, Mr. Speaker, we have to make sure the whole story is told. Yes. Because they would like for us to be labeled as people that mismanage projects. People that do illegal and nefarious things and people that just come to this house and scream about racism. But that's not the case. The agenda is clear that we are working to change the lives of each and every Bermudian. And we know and we're clear of the responsibility. So we're not going to wait on the Royal Gazette to tell everybody in this country what's going on. They won't do it. Because they, rec they represent an element that wants to demonize and villainize us. And yes, that's not the boogeyman. That is fact. Because you can look at historically what has happened in this country. But the reality of it is, it's not just the words that you know. We are looking at the actions of how this country is changing through this party's leadership. We have seen an increase in gang violence in Bermuda. And this government is working to change it. We have seen more great graduations, police officers, community support workers going into this community, rolling up their sleeves. Three graduations this week, two next week, middle schoolers now being trained how to deal with violence, how to deal with, co uh, with conflict. We've created two circles in both restorative circles at Cedar Bridge. And at Barclay, where our young men are coming in, and when there is discord, when there is disquiet, no, they're not being taught how to fight, they're being taught how to change it. Because we understand with certain things that have happened in, in our community, there have been years of things that have, have happened to us that this party is working to reverse. So the psyche and the psychology of our people, they are being taught how to deal effectively with conflict. That's not being done by anybody else. That's being done by this party. And so when people speak of the boogeyman, people don't be misguided by that. Look at the actions. Look at the development. Look at the movement. We heard, and I will not reflect in an earlier debate. We've seen the tax reform. So we've had to go up into the enchilant of business. Come down to the social stratosphere and balance this country. How could we not have the opportunity to do so? We see all the things that are happening. We see what's happening and we're working in education, but we continue to have to do so. What we have learned from the opposition is that they focus so heavily on specific segments that they neglected the people of Bermuda, the everyday man and woman. That's not my words. They sit in the very seat that bears an effigy to their failings. And now they challenge us as we right the wrongs of their leadership and underserved civil service and understaffed civil service and underfunded civil service. And now we're trying to make head to tail of the mess that they have created. And they challenge us to create the boogeyman. We are balancing this country. Okay. Our children go to these schools. This is our country and we will continue. Look at the legislation that we've passed. Look at the opportunities that we've given to young Bermudians. 
when you go to the Bermuda College. The majority of the children in there, they ran to us at our last meeting, thanking us for giving them the opportunity to be afford to afford to go to school. Do you know who cut the funding? The OBA government cut that funding for education. Where did the money, where did all the increases go? Show me the increases. The increases went to the America's Club. And that they are now held in account for their mismanagement of the social element of this country. They lord that they change this country economically. To what expense? To the very expense of the people now that we are left to try to pull the pieces together. And then when we challenge them on it, when we challenge their bad record of social justice, their bad record of social justice, they throw in our faces when we highlight the injustice of years in this country. They throw in our face that we are matching a boogeyman. Do they understand the very effigy of what we have to go through in this country every day as Bermudians struggling to make it while they represent an oligarchy that oppressed the working majority in this country for years? And they say that they speak on our behalf for generations. They represent an oligarchy that oppressed the people of this country. And we now struggle to keep it together, to balance it. And they now have the audacity to say when we refer to their bad deeds that it, we are speaking of the boogeyman. We will continue to work for the people of Bermuda. And sometimes when we come to the house, we have to remind each other through strong words of our past. We have to stand for injustice. And sometimes that's uncomfortable to hear what the oligarchy have done, how they have benefited, how they have gilded their homes, how they have gilded their lives, all this blood, sweat, and tears of black Bermudians. Sometimes we have to highlight that, and it's uncomfortable for all. But we will continue to work through it. But guess what? The disadvantage that everyone in the opposition has is that we will do it for all of Bermuda, white, black, Everybody in this country, we will work to see their benefit. And that is the difference. We believe in a, a good Bermuda for all, that a high tide raises all boats. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.